the audacity of Juliana. Baby went and got a little pleather jacket. <laughs> she got a little pleather jacket from Rainbow. She went to the Dominican salon and got a blowout. And now she thinks she Griselda Blanco. I'm just saying like, girl, if you don't sit down, you are not the female Scarface. Like, bad, bad. You is just the bargain brand Raquel because that's who she want to be. I'm honestly not mad at you for doing your job. But I'm annoyed with Burke because she doing a whole bunch of other ish that ain't got nothing. Do she even have cases? Because baby spent all her time chasing behind Howard and whatever is going on with him and his shooting and his skeletons in the closet. It's like baby don't do no work. She clocking in and ain't doing no baby y'all. What are her cases? Has she solved any cases yet? What's up? She it's Nikki. Welcome or welcome back to my channel, King Nikki TV, where I give you commentary on popular movies and TV shows. In this video, I will be recapping episode 10, the series finale of season two, Raising Canaan. Now, you know, last episode, Burke ran into Crackhead Sam. <laughs> <laughs> who got arrested and his get out of jail free card. He kept yelling that he knows who shot that detective, you know, Detective Howard. Fast forward, news travels, and Rock sends Marvin to take out Crackhead Sam. But of course, Marvin is on his new journey of trying to do good. I don't know how that works when you in the drug game, <laughs> but he trying. So instead of killing Crackhead Sam, he sets him up with a bus ticket and a ton of money and tells him to get out of town. That South Side is not safe for him. And he can't tell him why, but he tells him if I see you again basically it's on site like I have to take you out now I feel like Marvin knew exactly where to find Sam because I feel like you know what you're dealing with when you're dealing with somebody who is addicted to drugs. Marvin was in this situation before. Remember, he was getting high on his own supply, but I feel like he did want to give Sam a chance and he was hoping that Sam would take it, but he pretty much likely knew he wouldn't and followed him. And that's how he likely knew exactly where Sam was. So at the top of this episode, we pretty much see Marvin bust into the crack house <laughs> where Sam and his crack Crackhead buddy is in there getting high and Marvin pretty much shoots the friend on site upset with Sam like I was trying to do good I tried to give you a chance and look at what you made me do now I feel like I honestly Raising Canaan is my favorite series of in the power universe after the original power is my favorite spinoff but I was honestly getting a little bored with this season like I completely understand that they were setting stuff up but it just was not keeping my attention so I pretty much stopped watching it and I binged like the last I think three episodes right before the season finale and it was actually pretty entertaining to just see them back to back as opposed to just waiting each week but I feel like they really delivered on this season finale like 150 billion percent everything that we have been watching being set up it all had a really great payoff now this it was a lot of scenes in this episode that were just so amazing so well shot so well executed acted etc but this up this scene at the top of the episode was particularly really good and it really spoke to a lot so basically before he kills Sam of course Poor Sam is sitting there like, yo, look, Marv, I got my, my ticket. I got my snacks. I'm going to get on that bus. But Marvin pretty much says it's too late. The bus is gone. You missed the bus. I already told you it's on site. I have to take you out. So Sam pretty much is like, look. And the way his expression was, I thought he was really finna like say something. But no, he pretty much just says, yo, Marv, before you kill me, just let me get this one last hit. <laughs> yo. Crack is a hell of a drug. Like, he literally was like, he ain't plead for his life. He just said, let me get this one last hit. And Sam pretty much goes into how he used to actually be an accountant. He had a cubicle. Like, folks was trusting him with their money, but Crack got a hold of him. And I thought this was a really interesting scene. First of all, they need to give the Emmy to Crackhead Sam because after <laughs> Chris Rock and Pookie, this might be the best Crackhead. I mean, he was so good. And I was really upset when we got to the episode before this when he was in there yelling about he know who killed, uh, I mean, not killed, but shot the cop. And I I was just like no Sam shut your mouth because I don't want you to die I love 
love Sam. And I think I said in one of my previous videos that I hope he stick around, but, but baby ain't stick around. But I love Sam. Every time Sam was on the screen, he was just really entertaining and well acted. And even this scene, because the way that we have seen Crackhead Sam, the vulnerability and just the way he was delivering his lines in this, it was all just so good. And I feel like it really hit Marvin. First of all, Marvin just trying to do right. Second of all, Marvin is very well acquainted with Crackhead Sam and you could really see the emotion on him which it felt like he would have feel no emotion when he shot the buddy <laughs> but when he had to kill Sam he got emotional but Sam pretty much goes into like once you start down a road sometimes you can't turn back and that's when Marvin takes him out and it was very interesting 50 cents voiceover in this scene when he was talking about how you go down a certain road and you come in contact with the devil and it's just certain things that you can't go back on and I feel like his voiceover was really speaking to Sam for me I feel like it was pretty much conveying that Sam could not get on that bus like he was controlled by his addiction even in the voiceover when 50 cent character you know aka Kanan was saying how he never did drugs he never wanted anything controlling him this was pretty much controlling Sam and I thought this was just really really good and it, I'm I'm not mad they took Sam out it was fitting of course he had to go because he was a witness to what Kanan did but I, I would have liked to see him more but I feel like this was a very just ending for his character they it was very well done now we end up seeing Neek and Warrell pull up on Raquel while she's sitting at a diner. She got her bodyguard because, of course, we into it with the Italians. And Neek pretty much goes over and he tells her, look, Sal coming for you like straight up and Rock is like and I bet you told him exactly where to find me but Neek already said when Sal came at him for the info I'm not a rat I'm not finna snitch nobody out I don't care if it is my enemy and when Sal was pretty much like nobody will know you snitch but Neek is like nah because I will know that I snitch so he pretty much conveys to Raquel that he didn't give her up but he's just trying to give her the heads up that Sal is coming from coming for her and there will be blood on the streets okay there will be blood <laughs> and I gotta be honest I still love Raquel she is still top tier power universe character for me personally it, it really teeters between her and Tommy <laughs> as my favorites but I don't like how they had her character moving this season it was not as smart and strategic as I feel I would be expecting from Raquel she pretty much is like well I ain't never been scared of a little blood on the streets like we was expecting this it is what it is but I feel like as much as she was like we were ready baby y'all was not ready <laughs> Like in no shape, way, or form were y'all ready. But anyway, this was really interesting because Neat goes into, you know, he was calling her baby. And I was like, first of all, y'all know Unique been my favorite. Like he been one of my faves since the beginning. He is his character is so attractive, but I ain't about that life. <laughs> But when he was saying baby to Raquel, I was like, oh, okay, maybe I could be a little thug chick. Yeah, no, I really couldn't. <laughs> but he ends up telling Rock, like, you ever thought about me like that? Ever thought about us dating? And she pretty much is like, okay, nigga, you really going crazy. Like, but he ends up saying, hey, a lot of romances start at work when people button heads and they at the water cooler. And she pretty much not feeding into it. She like, nigga, ain't no water cooler where I work. <laughs> and she goes into one and we trying to kill each other at one point and he pretty much says it's a thin line which we all know he's referring to it's a thin line between love and hate I honestly do not want to see a romance between Neek and Raquel because baby I love Raquel I love Raquel but baby it's toxic <laughs> we see how she almost ate Symphony alive the nigga barely made it out with his life okay and the little teensy bit of like heart that she got left that ain't cold spared his life but I don't need Neat getting caught up with it and what happened to Neat baby mama didn't he have a girl but anyway Neek pretty much goes into how him and Rorel finna be on their own ish they own to greener pastures they got their own thing that they finna put together and Rock is pretty much like well good luck because 
as long as you ain't in my territory, you know, may you flourish and prosper. Oh, and also I forgot to say before she even went into that, she offered Nika a job because she, y'all know, look, I'm going to give it to Raquel. She thinks big. She dreams big. She got some goals. She keeps talking about they expanding and they're going to be worldwide. She not happy just with her little money and her little thing going on in Southside and trying to expand to New Jersey. Well, I don't know how that went, but she is very determined that she is going to be worldwide because remember, she got stuff cooking up with Cartier's guy. So she feel like she finna go, I think he, was he North Carolina? Somewhere like further south. Anyway, she expanded and she offers Neek a place. She's like, look, I could use somebody like you, but Neek pretty much tells her, look, I'm not built to be nobody employee. I'm built to run the ish. <laughs> I don't get ran. I run the ish. So that's when he goes into how him and Warrell are moving on to greener pastures. Now, he ends up getting out of there and she was kind of, you know, smirking at his little flirtations, but y'all, no, please, I don't want to see that happen because I really like Neek and he, I don't know if anybody can really go out a OG in this kind of business, like something going to take you out, but I would like to see Neek <laughs> go on and prosper for as long as possible. He do not need to get caught up in her black widow web, okay? Now, we end up seeing Kanan and Famous. Kanan and Famous. Y'all, when I tell you, first of all, Famous is just the biggest clown. I have said that since the beginning, but you know, Kanan is just typical teenager and I really be annoyed with the teenagers up in my drug game. <laughs> in my little series and stuff I could now he ain't on the level of Tariq now I could not say Tariq is probably my most hated character in a universe franchise Kanan ain't on that level I honestly have no real issues with Kanan Every, yes Kanan does stupid stuff yes Kanan be on his fake teen angst always angry over nothing well not completely over nothing but it really be feeling like it's over nothing and he just do a lot of stupid stuff but I feel like Kanan is just a pretty typical teenager so I'm really not holding much against him and he honestly does not bother me and I get all the critiques of how the actor delivers his lines and talks because you know he's trying to sound like 50 Cent who is the adult Kanye honestly none of that bothers me but him and, and <laughs> famous are some clowns so they are together they're in the apartment because obviously where we left off at Kanan is kind of on the outs with Rock he not staying at her house he spent one night at Howard's and he has been crashing at Famous's place ever since now I thought this was crazy because Famous gonna go into yo if you gonna be staying here you gotta put in on this rent you, you gotta help out and I'm saying like nigga he been helping you out before he was even crashing here he stole drugs for you he stole money for you from his mama and was helping you get your money like he has been there for you did he just buy you a slice of pizza and a soda like he been helping you out before he was staying here but i thought that was really funny i would have looked at him like nigga you got the that bro i've been there for you i've been having your back don't come at me with this i don't know that just really tripped me out but Kanan ends up going to into saying, yo, how do you feel about getting back on the corner? And I thought this was, yo, Famous was like getting on the corner and doing what? Selling our ass? <laughs> because what else do we have to get on the corner and sell? But Kanan pretty much goes into, we got product. And he tells Famous, we going to get like a grip, like a ton. So we could really get some real money to cover the rent. Now, Y'all, y'all, Kanan getting a little, he getting, getting a little too big for his britches, as they say. And he pretty much tell Famous, who says, well, is Rock going to give you all that? Kanan say, I don't need her to give me nothing. That ish is mine and it being mine. Hold on now, baby. How does ish being yours? How is it yours? Because, yes, Rock said that he is the prince on the throne and she doing all this for him to pass it on to him. But hold on now, baby. She ain't passed it on to you yet. This ish is not yours. I don't see how a business his mama started and running and that he done been effing up <laughs> because Rock has had to clean up a lot of his messes. How he say this ish is his? Child, when I tell you, I ain't got no kids. Child, kids will come up in the at this point like a mug this this ish is his he is really on some crack i need raquel to really just turn real gangster on he need to be smacked one good time the way she rolled up 
<laughs> what was the lady name, the grown behind lady name who was, you know, on her <laughs> predator ish with Kanan? The way she rolled, rolled up on that lady with that gun, that's how she need to roll up on Kanan. Because Kanan is out of his ever loving mind right now. The attitude he got right now, the audacity. I'm just like, little nigga, uh uh. We're going to have to knock you down a peg. But hey, <laughs> this is the monster that Raquel is creating. Now, we end up seeing Ziza coming into the studio. And at this point, we see Luke kind of going through mail. And one of the letters he was really focused on said like Carver or something on it. And I didn't really know what this was. I'm like, what kind of letter could he be getting? And what the heck is a Carver? But we get into that later. At this point, Ziza comes in. He kind of just tell, he tells her, I thought we weren't doing nothing for a few weeks because of Cartier's death. Because she comes in saying she want to record. She made her own little beat child. Pull a tink tink. But she basically says, oh, I just said that for my parents because they was worried after Cartier got shot. But y'all, she should have listened to her parents. <laughs> but I'm jumping ahead. But anyway, she goes to put on her little track she made. When I tell y'all, baby put on the bargain brand Mary J. Blige. Come on now, child. Tell me that. That literally sounded like Mary J. Blige's song. I'm sitting here like, I hope y'all cut a check to play this in this uh, television show because that is Mary J. Blige. <laughs> and it sounded very lame. So Lou is acting like he feeling it and like, yeah, let, let's get in the booth. Let's record. And I'm just like, honestly, I'm so over the record label storyline. I have been over for a while. I have been trying to wait to see where the hell are we going with this and uh i still don't see where we're going other than you know the riff between lou and raquel now we end up seeing maybe one of my favorite scenes ju pulls up on core y'all know core from her mama church who is pushing up on her who is a part of that disgusting behind uh inner is it called an intervention whatever the hell the damn demons at the church did beating up on that girl forcing her to watch porn though and i'm like baby how is this of god y'all putting on porn baby how is you putting on porn and, and you're talking about god i don't know the issue was twisted but anyway first of all core don't pay attention to his surroundings because how he ain't see Juke sitting there on that on the on the steps outside I don't know how he just walked past her but when I tell you Juke got in his ass she beat this fool down let me tell you it, it is a progression of young Kanan into the Kanan we met on power Juke may not be the cold Juke that we met on power but baby has always been gangster she always she didn't have to grow into that like Kanan. Like she has always been very G cold and ruthless and gangster and I'm here for it and I love it. So she beating a boy down. I'm talking about she beating the brakes off this boy. <laughs> and the cops pull up. They pull Juke off of him and she laughing. She like, oh, that's my friend. We kicking it. And she was kicking the mess out of him. She talking about, oh, that's my friend. And we kicking it. Tell him, Corey, we cool. And I love when he talking about, she she sucker punched me or she snuck up on me. And she, she seeing like, nah, nigga, I, I, I came up on you and I beat your ass. Fair and <laughs> school. <laughs> And she did. Yes, she came up behind him and pushed him. But baby, that's not really a sucker punch. She just pushed you. And he did get a chance to throw some hits, but he just, he couldn't get with her. And you know, in the midst of it, he called her some derogatory terms because, you know, I guess that's what, you know, good Christian boys do. And she got all in his ass. <laughs> you just gonna have to accept your ass whooping like a man. <laughs> now... We end up seeing Burke old extra, extra annoying. And if they don't cancel Christmas on Burke, I'm telling you this, ladies and gentlemen. Now, let me tell you. First of all, I do not get annoyed when we watch the, like, the folks in power. I'm not annoyed when you're doing your job, right? That's their job. When you the police and you work in narcotics and the characters we following is in the drug following are in the drug game, I'm honestly not mad at you for doing your job. But I'm annoyed with Burke because she's doing a whole bunch of other ish that ain't got nothing. Do she even have cases? Because baby spent all her time chasing behind Howard and whatever is going on with him and his shooting and his skeletons in the closet. It's like baby don't do no work. She clocking in and ain't doing no, baby y'all, what are her cases? Has she solved any cases yet? 
she get on my nerve. But anyway, Burke is looking for Sam because of course she got the little information when he got locked up. And when I tell y'all, she goes into this crack spot. Though this respect that everybody <laughs> Gives to Burke is hilarious. These crackheads was hauling off on Burke. It was so funny. But I'm like, baby, why is y'all so mad? I thought when people get high, they be jovial or something, y'all. They was killing her. So she looking for Sam and they end up saying he had some crack house. And she, the thing that also annoys me with Burke is she don't even really do detective work. She just wants people to tell her everything. Like, baby, why don't you go investigate? And then she asked him for an exact address. And they see him like, baby, what kind of cop don't know what a crack house look like you can't just go find a crack house <laughs> so she ends up getting out of there going to look for sam and then we see a surprise cameo from tony danza who i have not seen in a million years sal goes to see stefano who is played by tony danza and remember sal was saying how he can't really go spill blood where raquel is because there's somebody one of the italians that like that's their area sal's supposed to stay his ass across the bridge <laughs> that's what the Stefano said that's his words he said you supposed to be over there you supposed to be in Jersey and Sal pretty much goes into saying how Rock came to visit him but y'all the disrespect the racial disrespect this season is out of control because you know Rock been calling the Italians all kind of crazy names and they've been calling her all kind of crazy names they saying all kind of stuff that I'm just like baby I'm in the south and I ain't even never heard of some of this stuff <laughs> a tussy roll and I'm just like baby the disrespect the disrespect and honestly I kind of felt like I didn't even know what I heard and I had to rewind it because I was like wait what did he say did he just call her a tussy roll y'all the disrespect but he pretty much goes into telling Sal that she stopped by and he's going to tell Sal the same thing he told her he ain't in it his name Ben and he ain't in it he not getting involved and you know that was one of Raquel things she was seeing if the mob was going to come out to help Sal against her now he ends up saying look you stay your ass across the river make sure you handle this and handle it quickly so I thought this was a cool little cameo um I ain't seen Tony Danza in a hundred million years. So it was kind of like unexpected and cool, but I wonder if he's going to continue in the series. Are we going to see him next season? So we end up seeing Kanan pull up to the Carter. And you know, normally Kanan and his little butterfingers always sneaking and stealing. But y'all, like I said, he done bucked up now and he feel like he the triple double OG. He walk in there and he look at everybody, including Marvin, and he just snatch up product. And Marvin is pretty much like, the hell is you doing? So he, Marvin also goes into, I know this ain't the first time you've been stealing because Kanan actually says, I'm getting work. And Marvin is like, no nigga, you stealing. <laughs> and I know it ain't the first time. So he says, you know, I'm gonna have to tell your mama. And child, when I tell you, Kanan say, F my mama. I don't F what my mama know. Child, when I tell you somebody need to slap fire out this little boy, I am not one for hitting your kids, but if you win the drug game <laughs> and you a queen pin and your son is acting a uh, ass, you gonna have to slap fire out of him. Now, Kanan goes into telling Marvin, how the hell am I stealing from myself? And he is just really throwing me with all of this. It's his, it's his. No, this is your mother's. <laughs> this ain't yours. Like, baby, your mama got product, not you. Your mama got money, not you. You ain't famous sitting over there broke. <laughs> <laughs> Raquel ain't sitting over nowhere broke. So we end up seeing a remember famous and his clown ass had his botched robbery <laughs> and shot old boy that had robbed him that time so when that scene happened remember we saw the neighbor across the way door was kind of like cracked or something and a detective is investigating and it's like a really elderly man who I don't know if he you know they say you know folks don't talk to the police so I don't know if he just not talking to the police or if he legit just doesn't remember Marvel's kind of messed up because he is an older gentleman like I don't mean that disrespect when I say Marvel's messed up but you know you could be older and maybe he got Alzheimer's or maybe dementia or something just not right so I'm not really sure I can't call it at this moment but a detective is annoyed and he like man so Somebody got shot right outside your door and you trying to tell me you ain't hitting nothing, you don't know nothing, you can't remember nothing. 
<laughs> but I feel like obviously he did not see famous's face but i'm pretty sure he heard old boy say famous and that's the thing with nicknames if he just said mark or something anybody could be named mark but everybody gonna know who famous is but so far he ain't say nothing but the detective did leave his card so i don't know where that's gonna lead and also remember they can do the little autopsy and the ballistics and stuff he used old girl mom's gun so i'm pretty sure if it's a registered gun they can trace it back to her so i'm not sure what's gonna happen with all of this now we end up seeing howard and burke pull up to marvin's crime scene and burke start burke got so, oh god burke really gets on my nerve and if baby die it's really just all on her because first of all she's not even being smart about what she's doing everybody and their mama know you doing this little underhanded investigation on your partner if you're doing something like this you're supposed to move kind of stealth like like everybody should not know this even when she was talking to that detective who she had secretly pulled his file why y'all like haul off somewhere private like they was talking with somebody just walked in and heard them like she is not being very smart about this in the slightest and it is also very just frustrated and annoying and I don't even get it. First of all, she don't know anything and she keeps looking for folks who just tell her and she be looking at people's family. Like, why do you think Juke gonna tell her own cousin? Why do you think Kanan gonna tell her his own mama? Like, she is just, just being just really stupid. And I feel like, okay, perfectly fine if you got a feeling about something and you keep it in the tub so when you do get evidence, but she is just like a dog with a bone and it honestly isn't even logical because I could completely see if a cop was shot or something and the cop want to know who shot him but baby Howard ain't concerned so why are you it is just the weirdest strangest just little grudge that she got going on and she is just not even smart about it she's just really stupid but anyway she has an attitude she comes to the crime scene she's gonna talk about oh this is like an execution and honestly Howard is playing it real good because you know when she got called into the office, he played it off like, oh, I guess it's about, you know, overtime, even though he knew what it was about. So he is playing it cool. Like, he don't know that she's investigating him like that. But he like, yo, you're going a little too far. And this ain't no execution. They crackheads. They probably got shot over crackhead-ish. So she ends up telling him that, no, actually, Sam remembered something from the, sh the shooting and he was going to tell me who shot you. And Howard ends up going into, well, you think this connected to who shot me? And her little Dumbo ass going to say, oh, you tell me if it's related. She just so stupid. And she's stupid because... If you really think that Sam was executed for what he knows, why are you putting a target on you to really make this a deal? Like, it just does not make any sense. Now, we end up seeing Marvin and Lou and some of Rock guys because pretty much Raquel playing against the Italians who is bigger, stronger, got more folk, got more guns. Her plan is, well, we don't have to win the war. We just going to hit them and they'll leave us alone. Like, baby, what kind of sense would that make? And I could see, <clears throat> no matter what, that just don't make sense. But I could see if it was still just a turf war thing of us going to Jersey. But baby's son is dead, even though his grudge is not logical. Your son of his own free will and volition took a job. He botched the job. And that's just what it is. Like, it's really nobody's fault. But to Saul it is so I'm saying like baby somebody's son is involved their son is dead you really think that all this gonna take for somebody who got way more muscle and power and folks than you is for you to take out a few guys because when they did that little drive by it was like a pin prick like you took out by two guys that did not hurt style business in the slightest like baby we got way more where that came from but that was her plan and we see them do a little drive by on the italians now we end up seeing canaan and famous on the corner selling a product but i gotta say i gotta give them credit they were doing it in a smart way that the cassette tape thing was smart even though i felt leaving them on the ground went smart but anyway i feel like they were actually doing this in a smart way because canaan had no product on him and famous ain't have product on him either okay so 
Canaan is standing out on the corner. Folks come to him for what they want, pay him the money, and he pretty much gives a signal to Famous, who then goes in a little alleyway where he got the drug stash. So I will say at least how they were doing it was, it was smart. It really was. Like, at least Canaan ain't had a product in his pocket or some ish. You know what I mean? So... Famous end, ends up going to Canaan like, hold on, wait a minute. I thought your mama said she want to buy it on the corner. And you know, Canaan is just on his F my mama, F what my mama say. <laughs> and just as we see this going down, child, who y'all think just happened to drive by? <laughs> Detective Muskin Burke. Now, and I was mad at Famous for this because he sees Burke, who did not turn on any sirens or anything. She just busts a U-turn and he hauls off and runs. Because remember, he already had his experience in a holding cell and I don't blame you, baby, because I don't ever want to get arrested. <laughs> I don't. So, he gets the product, he runs off, but I'm like, baby, you could at least gave Kate my hands up. You could have yelled 5-0 or something. But he just busts out. Now, Kanan does see Burke, and I do wonder why he didn't just run, but I assume it's because she really had no motive to arrest him. He had no product on him, so maybe that's why he didn't run. So... This is another reason that I'm really not down with Burke because like I said, I don't get mad in these uh, TV shows when the cops are just doing their job. It's your job to investigate damn drug dealers then nigga investigate. Like, I don't really care. But she got is so gung-ho about something ain't right with Howard and he a dirty cop or whatever the hell she think going on. But she arrests Kanan for no reason. Like, you can't just run up on somebody on the street and just throw handcuffs on them and force them to get in your car. Baby, that's not how this works so she forces him in the car because he said i don't talk to police and she said well then just listen and she i'm thinking she taking him to the station or to the precinct because i'm sitting here like well baby what you gonna charge him with no she takes him to the park where howard was shot and she is all like is this what happened and i'm just like if i was kind as soon as she took them handcuffs off i would have just left like i don't have to be here i don't have to talk to you you have no cause to arrest me or hold me here but Y'all, let me tell you, he don't tell her nothing, which why would he, your dumb ass new detective, why the hell would I tell you ish on my own mother and my own family, your dumb ass, y'all, she get on my nerve, like, I really just can't, like, she is so stupid, so he, she ends up saying, fine, since you won't tell me what I want to know, she ends up throwing a tantrum and saying, well, then I'm gonna arrest you, and she pretty much, he is like, I don't have nothing on me, you can't arrest, so she pretty much goes into well I just make some shit up and of course Kanan gets shook because cops do this all the time and he know he could really get in some trouble even though he ain't got nothing on him she could just say he did and just lock him up so he ends up <laughs> <laughs> y'all he pushed Burke ass down she fell down like timber like that is so funny how she was laying there and of course now he done assaulted the officer now she really does have cause to arrest him which it just is a whole cycle that don't make no sense because baby I shouldn't even be here like you had no cause to throw handcuffs on me and snatch me up off the motherfucking block so he ends up shook and he runs off and she y'all I know how to find you Kanan <laughs> <laughs> child Burke get on my nerve I cannot stand her she is so stupid and literally her girlfriend Howard her boss everybody keeps telling her to let the ish go and she won't so when she die I need that ish to be nasty I need it to be known to her face you are dying because your ass was dumb and would not give this shit up it's just so stupid so we end up seeing you know, Lou got his letter that said Carver, and we end up seeing him going up to the bank. It's Carver Bank. You know, we see the sign, so we could put two and two together that the sign is the name that we saw on the letter. And he ends up sitting down with somebody who pretty much goes over to inform him about the Crown's dealings and everything with the business, right? Which is another just stupid, he killed Crown, but you don't even, Lou really don't be moving smart to me. He claimed to want to get out the game and have this record 
good label, but the he I don't know, he do foolery in my opinion. You don't know the real dealings and ins and outs of this business. You had you have no clue about the paperwork on your own business that your partner did because you treated them like trash. So why the hell would you know? Why would he tell you? Of course he gonna go behind your back. So the man ends up informing him that Crown sold 15% of the business and in the agreement upon his death, you know, his mama get money, his family get money, et cetera, et cetera. But he also gone into on his death caused by Lou that his share would go to that partner who got the 15%. And who y'all think name is sitting on there? We already know Raquel Thomas, but now Lou knows. So Lou is pissed. Lou is pissed. But I really, honestly, honestly, I don't fault Lou for wanting to get out of the game, but baby, I don't even feel sorry for you because you have not been moving smart. You just been moving so foolishly in my opinion. First of all, you treated crown like dirt. Why would he not want you out of his ish that he had first that you strong armed him for? You caused him to go behind you to rock. And of course, rock ain't give an issue about crown. Rock was doing her own little game. And that's why Raquel gave Lou the info on Crown because she knew he would take him out. And she knew that would mean she owns the business, a bigger portion than Lou. Because she got her 15% and now she has Crown's percentage. Y'all, honestly, I'm just like, Lou, this is what you get. In all honesty, because he hasn't been moving smart. He hasn't been moving smart. Now, we end up seeing Rock and Marvin meeting up with Cartier guy, Tre Tremont, who was going to be her connect to like North Carolina, South Carolina, somewhere down South, y'all, I can't remember. Now, she ended up doing everything for this dude to get him on her squad. She took out Cartier for him. She cleared that gun charge that his boy got. But... When they go to finally sit down to make the deal, they give each other that little look. And Rocky's like, what's that look about? And Tremont end up telling her, look, we don't need you. We good. And Rocky's like, hold on now, nigga. How you good without me? So he pretty much says, the reason we ain't want Cartier because we don't want the middleman. You would just be another middleman. And we hear you got problems with the Italians and we ain't trying to get mixed up in that. And Rock is like, hold on now. How do you know anything about the Italians? Who you been talking to? But Marvin called on and he says they went around us. So they pretty much went to her connect for their own deal that she was putting together. Y'all, y'all. Raquel, I, like I said, they had her slipping on her pimping this season and I don't like it. Raquel is not as in control as she thought she was. <laughs> so they end up handing her a little envelope of money and saying that's for Cartier, that's for the junk drug, I'm not the drug charge, <laughs> that's for the gun charge and now we even. But Rock is like, no nigga, we not even until I F you like you just F me. And my is bigger than yours. <laughs> and he just pretty much like, yo, good luck. <laughs> he not sweating her at all. And I feel like I need her to get the get back on this fool. And I need it to be real. I'm sorry, but look, the ish need, we got to be ruthless. Like we cannot let ish like this slide. This was a real offense. I did all that ish with the verbal understanding between me and you that you was going to come on over to my side. I ain't have to clear Cartier out of there. That was for you. <laughs> so we end up seeing Juke meeting up with Nicole's dad. And I got to be honest, I'm so over Nicole's storyline. I just am so over it. I have no idea why we are still dragging this out. Like, man, can we just let this storyline die? Now, y'all know last episode that Nicole's dad had Juke come over to his house. He had somebody from, I think it was internal affairs and was pretty much wanting Juke to tell them that the Ted Burke had an inappropriate relationship with her and Nicole and is the one who supplied Nicole with the drugs, which we can deduce that this all came from Howard because we saw Howard going up to the dad's house. Now, Howard is a cop. 
he should know how this ish works. I don't know why he thought he could just say that and it would do anything to bring down Burke because they need a corroborating witness, especially since Howard giving the information is something that the dad is not willing to share, which I'm pretty sure, you know, Howard told him like this got to stay on the low. So I don't know why we going to bombard or ambush <laughs> Juke with this. Like Juke don't know nothing about this. Now, really, I'm sitting here like Juke, baby. Burke need to be getting the, you know, the F up out of here. So just go ahead and go ahead with the lie. But nah, Juke is like, no, that's not what happened. And she pretty much goes into telling the dad because he says, look, I know you scared. I know how it is when it comes to cops and your community, you know, child, <laughs> Nicole parents, I can't. But anyway, she ends up saying, no, Nicole got them drugs from my bag. I didn't know she took them. And the dad, you know, like a lot of parents, it's just in denial about their child. Baby, your child was on drugs. <laughs> your child did drugs, but he don't want to accept that. So she ends up pretty much just walking out after telling him that and i'm really sick of them dragging this out i mean are we gonna drag it out more and now he gonna have a vendetta against juke and try and come after her i don't know so we end up seeing raquel and marvin pulling up on joaquin the connect and he got his sister not his sister child <laughs> his cousin juliana next to him y'all juliana is the one who set up the deal with Tremont and his guy because remember when they was following rock they was kind of eyeing Juliana so I think she said they pulled up at her store they got you know got the talking I think they was just trying to hit on her but she said we realized we could do business without you which is which is actually better for everybody so Raquel is upset and she pretty much tells Joaquin this ain't how you do business like I set this deal up you don't go behind me you need to check your cousin this ain't got nothing to do with business she just salty that Neat came up in her store and yanked her little ass up and let me tell you child the audacity of Juliana baby went and got a little pleather jacket <laughs> she got a little pleather jacket from Rainbow she went to the Dominican salon and got a blowout and now she thinks she Griselda Blanco I'm just saying like girl if you don't sit down you are not the female Scarface like bad bad you is just the bargain brand Raquel because that's who she want to be so Marvin ends up telling Rock look it's done I feel like he pretty much was trying to say, baby, we got bigger fish to fry. We got to worry about the Italians. We ain't got time to be trying to go to war with the connecting his folks. So he pretty much tells Rock, look, let's just get out of here before we say or do something we can't take back. And Juliana is like, yeah, you should listen to your brother. I wanted to slap fire out of you. I just cannot believe the audacity. Baby, last time we saw you, you was trembling and shaking and couldn't even hand neat chains because you was so shook. And now you is thug life or something? Girl, sit your ass down sit your ass down but Raquel ends up telling her look you boxing outside your weight class and it ain't about if you can throw a hit it's about if you could take one I'll tell, I don't know how she gonna play this because I'm pretty sure <laughs> especially how this episode ends we can't afford to go to war with Joaquin so I don't know how the hell we're gonna take out Juliana but we need to and it needs to be very personal it needs to be Rock who takes her out now we end up seeing Marvin get home and I have felt like that they was kind of slacking the whole episode. I just kept expecting the Italians to jump out. Marvin get home. Rock the only one walking around with security child. Marvin get home and he goes to lay down and I got scared. I was like, oh my God, like is the Italians in the house? He hears a noise upstairs. He goes to check it out, but come to find out it's just his daughter. It's jukebox in her bedroom she is home to stay and when i tell y'all it warms my heart that her and marvin is getting you know to a good place and passing up their relationship yes marvin was homophobic as hell and yanked up choked his own goddamn daughter and that is to me is unforgivable but look I believe in redemption. I believe that people can't, no matter how down low or disgusting a thing is somebody does, people can change. Like they really can. And I feel like with Marvin, it is very genuine that he feels massively guilty about what he did to his daughter and how he behaved. And he is seriously trying to make things better between her. So I, I really do like seeing this. Juke really ain't got nobody child. Her mama had the damn church try to do an exorcism on her. <laughs> 
to try and exercise her lesbian demon child. That that mess was crazy. So she really, you know, I feel like she needs her dad. And yes, Marvin is Marvin, but I have always liked Marvin and I, I am happy to see them patching things up. But the way they was going, I thought Marvin was finna die. Cause you know how it is when you be making amends and turning over a new leaf. He set up some kind of date with a uh, juke to go to the restaurant or whatever. And I'm just sitting here like, he was so happy about her moving in. I thought it was really endearing. And I was just like, baby, they setting up to kill Marvin off. They setting up because, and also remember, when Kanan was talking about everybody always asks how Juke got so cold hearted and he said it was accumulation of things. Now we know one thing was the damn church exorcism, but I was thinking it could be the dad getting killed. I was like, Lord, tell me they ain't finna kill off Marvin. And I love Marvin. <laughs> and I was, I just, I felt like that's what they were leading up to. Now we end up seeing Raquel in her new house that she bought. She has a vase with flowers and a card from her realtor basically saying congratulations on your new home but she is still reeling from this ish that done went down with Joaquin and Tremont and Juliana and probably accumulation of things because Raquel always just seems so in control but everything literally could not be more out of control in this moment and I feel like she was really just having a moment and she throws the damn vase across the room just as Lou asked come up in there <laughs> and this was one of my favorite scenes when I tell you the scene at the top of the episode with Crackhead Sam and Marvin and this scene with Lou and Raquel is just a master class in acting and just the way the scene was shot how it was written it was just so I literally saw this scene quite a few times it was so freaking good now Lou comes in and he like when you was gonna tell me and Raquel is pretty much like nigga I'm tired like I ain't got time to be going through this with you right now but he wanna go so she like so how many times we're gonna have the same damn conversation Lou how many times are we gonna have the same damn conversation and when I tell you Rock got in his ass and in all honesty she got in his ass so bad baby I felt bad but at the same time I was kind of on I was kind of with Rock I really was because she goes into telling him we keep having the same conversation everything you have I own everything you have I gave you and we already went through this just like Raquel said when she told him your money, my money. Your ish, my ish. Like, she already said all this to him. And she ends up hauling off on him. Now, this was the one point she made that I felt like she wasn't right about. When she talks about how she put Scrap down because he ain't had a heart for it and, and she effed up and she got to live with that and she finally lets him know that Scrap was not a snitch and she effed that up. Now, her point was not justified in this instance because Lou the shooter. If anybody know it's Lou, he had to take out that motherfucking kid. And I'm sure that is on his mind. And he has to live with that. So that's the one point she made that I was like, nah, Rock, you wrong on that one. But all the other points, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. She did clown the hell out of Lou, but I felt like I was with Rock. And she made a good point. Now... She pretty much goes into Lou saying, you keep running your mouth about how you finna go, but nigga, you ain't going nowhere. It's just something you say to make yourself feel better. And I got to agree with Raquel because the way that Lou has been moving with that record label has been dumb as hell. And it does feel like he got one foot in, one foot out, and the nigga really ain't going nowhere. It's just game. He talks like she said to make himself feel better. Lou, everything Lou has been doing, First of all, how he got into the stupid record label was to strong arm Crown for Crown's ish. And I don't care when people say, well, Crown was irresponsible. Well, Lou was paying for stuff for Crown. I don't care. That was his shit. You could be irresponsible with your shit. It's yours. You could be, you know, a fool with your shit. It's yours. That was Crown's ish that Lou strong armed himself into and then treated the boy like dirt, which I kept feeling like was unjustified. I kept saying, why the hell he keep dogging out Crown? And I don't blame Crown for bucking up on Lou. Why would I not? I'm not going to keep letting you punk me. Everything Lou was doing was not smart. Of course, Crown went behind your back. And then 
you killing crown set this shit off for rock to own this shit and then when you kill crown without even knowing the you know where all the hell is going on with the label that crown got going on you got your makers after your ass and what did you do you had to go to cartier to bail your ass out and remember he had to go to rock to get money not too long ago the business that he got with Crown is money from Raquel. He has not done shit on his own. He had to go to Rock. He had to go to Cartier. He had a strong arm Crown. I'm sorry, baby, but I'm with Rock. Rock already told you cannot buy a business with my drug money and say this your clean business that I ain't a part of. Nah, my nigga, she already told you what's yours is hers. She own what you own because you use her money to get it. So I'm sorry. I was all with rocking this scene. She told that nigga ass up. <laughs> I ain't never seen somebody <laughs> get knocked down like she did, Lou. I'm telling you her my heart. But I felt like she had a point. I really felt like she had a point. She pretty much tells him, since you can't seem to face it, let me make this real clear for you. Let me get the shit said. She she held back. Let, let me put my little phone down with my notes, baby, because I got to show. She held the nigga face. <laughs> like she gripped it. Like your grandma do when you keep laughing in church. Like I'm about to take your ass in the back of the church. She gripped his face. And she pretty much tells him, I own you, nigga. The way she own oh, yo. Give Patina Miller the motherfucking Emmy. This scene was, I was sitting there like, and Lou had tears in his eyes. Now, I will give it to Lou. The tears started because of scrap, because that really hit him. But baby, the way she told into his ass and everything she was saying, which when, when Rock said, nigga, you ain't going nowhere. I felt that. I, he show ain't. He show ain't. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm going to tell you. I was with Lou when she when she finally let it out that scrap wasn't a snitch, which the audience already knew. It is only, but I'm still hurt by it. It is only two deaths in the power universe that hurt me the most. That was, I can't remember his name, but the Hispanic kid that um Ghost got out of that gang that hurt and scrap hurt. Those are the two deaths that hurt me the most in the power universe. And the third death is Lou Pride. <laughs> She killed this nigga. She said, nigga, I own you, okay? But Lou been effing up, okay? And and when you think about it, Lou got upset with Cartier because Cartier was supposed to be a silent partner, but the nigga ain't stay silent. Well, baby, that's what when that was you and Crown little agreement. You were supposed to be a silent partner. And your ass ain't stay silent. <laughs> I get that Lou want to get out of the game and I don't blame him for that at all. I am all for it, baby. Get out the game. But the way he has been moving has not been smart. Rock being told you he used money from Rock to get the damn thing. And she told you already last season she own what you own. If Lou had not treated Crown like dirt, had not been punk and crown all the time which i i mean y'all am i wrong i was the it's just unwarranted you strong aren't me for my shit and then treated me like dirt why would i not go behind your back trying to get your ass up out of here if he hadn't treated crown like dirt crown would have never went to raquel to try to get lou up out of there he would have never made that deal with raquel if Lou hadn't killed Crown, wouldn't have gave her the owning percentage of the business because now she got the 15% and Crowns. Really, I'm, I'm with Raquel on this. I'm sorry, but I am. When she said, baby, you ain't going nowhere and I own you, I was like, I don't hear no lies. <laughs> I don't hear no lies. <laughs> Lou needed Rock for his business. Lou needed Cartier for his business. He keep me and other folk for it. He trying to do this. No, baby, that's not how this works. That's not how this works. You can't get, first of all, and I feel like he can't get, he was mad. You could see the little looks he was giving when Cartier was punking him like he was doing crown, but way more subtly and not as disrespectfully, but... But, baby, this is what happens. When you got to use somebody else to get you your ish, it ain't yours. 
It remind me of like, you know how parents be telling their kids, you don't own nothing in this house. Everything you got, I bought you. That's pretty much <laughs> Lou and Raquel. You don't own ish, nigga. <laughs> Cause it all came from me. And you know what? I was watching this scene and I done heard people saying, oh, um, it's going to be Lou that takes out Raquel. Are y'all crazy? Are y'all watching the show? I'm watching. Lou ain't got the guts to go after Rock? No. No, baby. <laughs> now I will say it is a possibility for folks to get pushed so far that they can, you know, must up the guts to do some issue you never thought they would do. But I do not see the light skinned ass nigga that was standing up against the wall crying while his sister grabbed his face and said, nigga, I own you bucking up on rock. I don't see it happening. <laughs> now we end up seeing Kanan going to Howard about the whole situation with Bert. This is the detective he got on his team. He know he done assault to the police officer and he pretty much just tells Howard the whole situation. And Howard tells him that him, Kanan and Rock need to all sit down together, get their story straight and figure this out. Now, I don't know how this is going to go exactly because I feel like, baby, we got to just kill Bert. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's how I feel. <laughs> we got to just kill Kill him. But Howard is on this road just like Marvin where he's trying to do good. Remember all that stuff he was saying when he had his near death experience that I was questioning if, if the validity of it. He was there serious. He's trying to get back into his religion. He's trying to do good. So, but I'm like, baby, we got to kill Bert. <laughs> so I don't know exactly how this is going to go down. I don't know how Marvin and Howard will ever truly be right when they on the road they own. Now, maybe Howard can because he's a detective and he could just, you know, just go straight, just straight and narrow, but not with what we caught up in. Because you entangled in this whole mess with Rock, Kanan, Burke, and I feel like we can't even let Burke speak this stuff. Like, we can't even let the accusations and her assumptions and stuff be spoken because we don't even want that in the air. So, I don't know how they're going to play all this. I don't know how it's going to all go down. Now... I can say I am really appreciating Marvin's character development. He went from I'm a gangster, I do gangster-ish, <laughs> to I'm trying to do good by you, dude. Like, he literally transitioned, and I love to see it. I really do. I just don't know how it's going to work when you in the drug game. <laughs> now, we end up seeing that, okay, Burke gets um jukebox out of lockup i don't know what d-a-t mean but that's what the guy say when he get her out of there and i was wondering who got her out i thought it was her mama but it was burke of course and she ends up accosting the girl talking about is howard kane and daddy and this is what she's so stupid baby why would i tell you that like, why would I tell you ish on my cousin and my, like, why would I say, why would I just say yes? It just doesn't make any sense. But instead she ends up saying, Juke says, you know what you write, you done helped me out of some stuff. So now I'm going to help you out. You need to watch your back because the cops that you think the niggas you, you ride with, they, they got a, a target on your back. They coming after you. So she ends up telling her girlfriend, Adina, that if anything happens to her, she says that because she pretty much tells her what Juke told her. And Adina's like, you listen to a high school kid? But Burke is like, she knows things. And honestly, the way <laughs> Burke was saying that, like, what is she, a psychic? She knows things. And most of the time, she's right. And I'm just like, well, you know, she is right. <laughs> but it was just the way Burke was like, she knows things. Now, we end up seeing... Paula, Tink Tink, Lou, back at the studio, right? And Ziza in there, she all excited. She want to get into the booth. But Lou goes into, I'm not working in here tonight. I'm not working in here ever again. I'm getting my ish, and I'm never coming back. He and pretty much tell her bulletproof records could burn to the ground for all I care. Now, when he said, I'm never coming back, I was like, hold on now, baby. Do you mean you never come back to the studio? Do you mean you never coming back to the South Side? Do you mean you never come back to New York City? Like, what do you mean you never? Like, is Lou leaving like I was very confused I was like hold on baby what is I'm never coming back <laughs> now I gotta tell y'all 
they had me shook. These last, uh, what was this, maybe the last 15 minutes of the episode when we start right here with Lou at the studio, I was on pins and needles. The suspense and the tension that they built at this, that, you know, we got in these last moments was so good because I just knew, first of all, it's the season finale. First of all, we know everything is coming to a head, but also just how the episode was playing now, I was like, I know some ish finna go down. Something finna go down. <laughs> we see Marvin pull up to the Carter. And I feel so nervous for him because, like I said, the way his character arc has been going, I really thought they was going to kill him off. We see Neek and Warrell at they Carter spot. You know, we got the Carter one, two, three. We got the Carter five. <laughs> now, Neek and Warrell are talking, and we got some crackhead who come up in there, you know, making a fuss and going crazy. And Neek ends up telling Warrell, all the crackheads is old folks. These young niggas ain't messing with crack. And Warrell is like, don't nobody want to be a base head. Like, it's not a good look. And Neek is like, yo, crack is dying. We need a business change. The business is changing and we got to change with it. But they keep showing us this stuff, right? And we end up seeing the guys at the car to doing the count. They, you know, playing dice. And I'm just like, baby, what is going to go down? We so see Howard. we end up also seeing Howard and Kanan on the road. And I'm just like, the way they're playing this stuff out, I'm just like, hold on. What's going to happen? Like, it was just so suspenseful because we know some issues going to go down. Then then we end up seeing Sal at his spot and y'all I was on pins on and pins and needles I had high anxiety because I knew something was gonna happen Sal puts on his little record baby the Italians run up in the car <laughs> Warrell gets killed we see the Italians run up in the studio and the way they were in the studio, right? Zisa back was kind of turned to the entrance, but Lou was coming from a back way, so he was facing the entrance. So he saw the Italians running up. He yells at Zisa to get down, and Zisa gets killed. No love lost. <laughs> I feel sorry for her parents though, because her parents said after the car they ain't got shot, they ain't want her in here, and now they baby dead. But now remember. The Italian Sal has had the Italians following Raquel and her folk. So of course they know about all the spots, the studio where Rock live. I'm sure they know everything. And we likely, because Nick would help us out, don't know exactly what folk gonna be at what time. So Sal just said hit and motherfucking spot at the same time. They hit everywhere. And to me, it was way too easy. It was no, first of all. Nobody had any kind of security or backup except Raquel. I don't know why Lou and Marvin was just rolling by solo dolo. And then it was way too easy for these Italians to get up in the Carter. Wasn't that the point of us being up high that we could see, you know, the danger coming, baby? What was the lookouts? First of all, the niggas, like, how is Italians just in the projects and nobody don't see nothing? Nobody don't think that's odd. We, like, where are the lookouts? They get to the Carter. All we got is some flimsy ass gates. <laughs> Random crackheads was getting shot. It was, you know, rest in peace to the crackhead. I was trying to get in the dough, but it just ain't make no sense. We know we are at war with the Italians, and I just felt like this ain't make no sense. Y'all really thought that little pinprick uh, lick that y'all got was going to stop them who got way more folk and guns and firepower? It just did not make any sense. Now, we end up seeing that Marvin gives cover so his folk can get out oh and we drop the dope down the shoe of course because remember we and this is also how i know that the italians did not have any kind of inside man remember at the carter we got apartment 807 that's the dope spot but we also got the apartment right beneath the 707 because that's where we shoot the stuff down at right the italians ain't know nothing about that spot they only knew the stash spot now Marvin gives cover get his folk out Marvin gets shot and Marvin tries to go into the spot downstairs where he sent his folk maybe they ain't let him in maybe all y'all need to get fired even though we done lost about 90% of our folks so I don't really know if we can afford to find nobody but baby how I saved y'all ass and y'all don't let me in but let me tell you how karma do let me tell you why you shouldn't just be mean and nasty to folks that you think can't do nothing for you remember <clears throat> 
earlier in the season when Marvin started his anger management and the guy in the wheelchair was upset because he can't ever get on the elevator because of all they little business they got going on and Marvin ended up actually being cool headed and being nice in the situation. That's who let Marvin in and saved his life was homeboy in the wheelchair. The real MVP of the episode Save my baby Marvin. I thought that was so good. Yo, thank you, Miss Renee. And she ain't even get the reap the rewards. You know what? I feel like Marvin, <laughs> when he hauled off on Tony about cuddling, he might've cuddled with Miss Renee, but baby had to die. She missed out on reaping her rewards child. But thank you, Miss Renee. Renee because baby it saved his life it saved Marvin life now I hope when we get to the next season Marvin is alive because he got shot in the gut a gut wound is serious I think it was in his gut or his side because I feel like it was his gut he was losing a lot of blood but hopefully Marvin is all good and we didn't lose you know the core crew now we end up seeing Juke mom pulling up at Raquel's house and she goes into how <laughs> she want to talk to her mother to mother because Juke assaulted court and I'm saying like no baby talk about how the church assaulted Juke but anyway uh Raquel kind of catch on and she like hold on now my guys just let you roll roll up on my doorstep and that's when she see her guys is in the car dead and the Italians done already killed them and I'm pretty sure it was you know getting their way to rock but they saw the opportunity when they saw uh what is her what is Juke mama named Kenya when they saw Kenya walking up and getting rocked open the door rock tell Kenya to get down baby Kenya get shot and killed Juke mama dead and I'm really interested to see how this is going to affect um Juke first of all her mom abandoned her so it ain't like she's ever known her mother but her mother did just now come into the picture but then she had the whole church assault her to get the you know lesbian demon out of juke so i don't know how juke is gonna react to this but now was Kenya dead mother freaking wrong and disgusting for what she did to her child with the whole damn church? 100%. But is it uh, punishable by death? Nah, man. Baby shouldn't have lost her life. That made me feel bad. But you know what they should have done? They should have had Burke ass pull up at Raquel's house about her running with Kanan, not Juke Mama. And it should have been Burke ass that got Christmas canceled on her. That made me mad that Burke survived this season finale. Now... We end up seeing Rock run into the house. Baby, yo, Rock had a gun stashed under the silverware. <laughs> and I don't know why she ain't just run out the back door. She went to run and she kind of just looked around, but then she faced the door, you know, holding the gun up. She was able to shoot the first guy that came in, but the second guy shoots her in the shoulder. She drops her gun. And I'm going to tell you like this, Rock, the triple-double OG, she was about to go out like a G. It wasn't no begging for her life, wasn't no crime. Baby said he was running his mouth she said nigga do what you came here to do <laughs> and the whole time I was thinking Howard was gonna bust up in there and save Rock because we saw him on the road with Kanan on the way over there to talk to her anyway and that's when we hear a gunshot the Italian is shot Rock is saved but baby it's not Howard it is unique it is unique the real triple double og let me tell you unique is the most solid out of everybody on here i don't count 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 <laughs> when i tell you that trip me out first of all his right hand man warwell was just killed he was attacked and he gets in the car to come over to raquel and save her ass i thought that was crazy i really love this scene though he shot the guy and he still had a gun in his hand and rob was kind of looking like and he ends up you know reaching his hand out to help her up and he like south side <laughs> Like, we might have our beef, but baby, look, it's us against them all day. It's us against the Italians. It's Southside all day. I kind of like how they did that. Now, I am perfectly fine with Neek and Raquel being allies because I do really like Neek. I always have since season one, but I don't want no relationship because like I said, she a black widow and I, I don't, I don't know. No, no. <laughs> now, <clears throat> we see Unique 
and Raquel walking out the door just as Detective Howard and Kanan pulls up and the look on Neek's face. Now, we already know that Neek and Howard had dealings. So it would not be, you know, very suspicious for Howard to have dealings with Rock. But what is suspicious is for Howard to be pulling up with her son in his car. Now, I don't know if you leak to that's his daddy, but yeah, uh-uh. Yeah. Secrets don't stay secrets for long. <laughs> I thought that the look on Neek's face I thought was very interesting. Look, Unique is the realest. He ain't snitch um to the Italians. And he pulled up in the clutch with the assist to save Raquel. <laughs> I really feel like this was the best season finale in Power Universe history. Like, arguably, I want to say it was the best. I have seen this same episode quite a few times because I just kept wanting to run it back. It was so good. Now, I will say next season, I, like, they have just elevated from season one to season two. Next season, I'm really excited for them to just elevate even more and give us a just an exciting ass season. I will say Kanan has the weakest storyline out of everybody um I have no problems with his character but I mean baby what is he doing like he got the weakest storyline and I'm um, the Nicole and her parents storyline is very tired I need us to just really dead that I need us to finally cancel Christmas on Burke <laughs> I need them to give the cast and crew the writers the set designers wardrobe everybody an Emmy because this show is top tier top notch and as a period piece they do very well keeping all the little details very 90s very good this show y'all yeah this is top tier this is top tier television right here now we do have some loose ends that weren't tied up but i feel like that's expected when you're dealing with a tv series the story is ongoing even though you do expect them to wrap certain things up in the season finale um obviously we didn't wrap up the storyline with the italians because <laughs> I don't know. Did we lose the war or did we lose the battle? <laughs> and she really, Rock really ain't got no folk left. So I don't know how we going to get back on the Italians really. And this is also why I thought her plan was stupid. Just shooting a few Italians was not going to end this. We need to kill Sal. Chop the head off the snake. Now we also have... I don't mind not wrapping up all the storylines in the series finale. However, we don't need to be starting stories at the end. We just had Scrap Mama roll up on um, Kanan saying she know her son ain't kill himself. Rock ain't doing nothing. If she don't do nothing, the mama will. Um, I don't know why we ain't saved that for the series. Um, you know, the next season introductory episode. Uh, I don't know why we waited to the end to pop her in like that. Um, that kind of annoys me because like I said, it's okay if you don't finish something, but baby don't start nothing <laughs> like right at the beginning. I mean, at the end and everybody has been, talking about how they ready to see Ghost and Tommy. I have never felt that way. The show is called Raising Canaan. It's not called Raising Ghost and Tommy. And logically, Kanan is a teenager. Remember, he don't even know the game himself. And he was older than Ghost and Tommy. And he taught Ghost and Tommy the, the game and took him, took them under his wing. So if we're seeing Kanan as a teenager, logically, we won't be seeing Ghost and Tommy for a very long time, child. So that's not even on my radar, honestly. And people have been saying they're ready to see, you know, the ruthless Kanan that we met in power, the adult Kanan. Um, that don't really bother me either. And I feel like it's because I'm so invested in all the other characters around Kanan. The show called Raising Kanan, but baby, he the, he kind of the, the bottom tier <laughs> character that anybody is really thinking about to me, or at least that I'm thinking about. Now, this was really just a great top notch top tier season finale i am so excited for the next season and like i have said from season one this is my number one favorite spinoff in the powers universe um dang do i want to say it has surpassed the original power show i don't know but it's my favorite of the spinoffs thank you so much for watching this video for supporting the channel make sure you leave your comments down below let me think let me know what you thought about this episode was this the best series finale in power universe or am i tripping <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you. I'll see you in the next one.